Violinists who are learning to play jazz often don't want to learn the chords, but I'm here to tell you why you need to learn the chords and three steps that you can take to really properly learning those chords. What's up everybody, my name is Matt Holborn, I'm a jazz violinist and teacher and this is my little video today chatting to you about why you need to learn the chords and how you can do so. Now the reason I think violinists often don't start with learning how to play the chords or learning what the chords are when it comes to learning jazz standards is that we sort of don't have to. So in order to perform in front of an audience, in order to play a jazz gig, Jazz violinists don't need to perform the chords. Our job is not to accompany anybody. Our job is generally to play the melody, play a solo, and uh, look pretty? Maybe not. Because of this, violinists often skimp on learning the chords. Now, what it is, is if you're a guitarist or a piano player, the first thing that you're going to have to do is learn the chords because you're going to be accompanying yourself and everybody else when you're performing this music. You're going to be playing chords behind people and you're going to have to support people. That means that like, if you want to get a gig, you're going to have to learn the chords. Often, if you're a pianist or a guitarist, your gigs where you're cutting your teeth and you're first getting into playing in front of an audience, you might be uh, accompanying musicians who are more accomplished than you, and they need you to know the chords. You have to know the chords in order to play a concert. There you go. As violinists, this is not something that comes up for us. Our first gigs might be, hey, do you want to come and play with my band? Maybe it's Django-style music. Come and play with my band. Uh, you know, I've got some charts. You can read the melodies and maybe take a solo or whatever. And often that's how we first start playing. You basically don't need to know the chords in order to do that. You can turn up, you can take, play the melody, and you can sort of, sort of play a solo that's just using your ear. And, you know, you'll get away with it a lot of the time, especially if you're playing with musicians who aren't very accomplished or playing with musicians who are not professional. Now, yes, this often means that we as violinists, we don't know the chords for pieces. There are so many violinists in the early stages of their learning that just bypass learning the chords altogether. I hear it all the time from people, uh, people at jam sessions, people who um, are getting lessons with me once in a while will say this. They'll say, I don't like to learn like that. I like to just use my ear and I like to just work it out as I go. I don't like to know the chords. I think that's not how you should learn music. Now, for me, this happens because of generally two reasons. Reason number one might be that that violinist has come from a classical place, okay? So they've come from classical background. They have played classical music all their lives, and they are now looking into playing jazz. And the fact, the thing that I'm looking at here is that Jazz is like an outlet for them to be creative and an outlet for them to try and enjoy music and to not worry about rules and not worry about having to stick to age-old tradition, right? They, a lot of people feel that jazz um, is a way out of that. Now, and they will be right in thinking that. There's a lot about jazz that does... That is that. We are open musicians, we improvise, and we, we never play the same thing twice often, you know, as if we're playing jazz. And the other side to it might be that you might come from folk music. And in folk music, it's an oral tradition. It's not all about learning the theory. It's not all about learning um, the why of what you're doing. Usually the why of what you're doing is a social reason. You're singing songs, you're playing songs. Look, the fact of the matter is, is that if you are playing jazz, you're going to have to learn what the chords are because as a jazz musician, you are a composer. If you are a composer, you have to know the harmony. Beethoven, Mozart, Bach, they all know the harmony. They, don't, they didn't go at it like, yeah, you know, I, I like to write some music once in a while. I like to just make it come out of nowhere. They studied music. They studied what makes music work. And they used their artistry to uh, create amazing music around those rules. We have to, as jazz violinists or jazz musicians, we have to think of ourselves like we are composers. We have to know the chords. We have to know a little bit of theory. And we have to know how to use all of that to make great music. 
if you are coming at jazz hoping to just suddenly be able to express yourself and not learn any tradition or not learn anything to do with rules or just not learn anything that's hard you're just mistaken it is not how it works if you want to make great music you've got to study you've got to put some time in you've got to put in the work now for me like practicing jazz or learning jazz you've got to go through a couple of different things when you're practicing you don't want to just be putting in the work and doing things that are tough and making it sort of all about the theory and all about the how what chord is this whatever you want to also be just finding time to be as open as you possibly can but I do believe that there's you know there's practice that we have to do that is that I would call the work is putting in the work the work for me is learning the chords it's making sure you know what notes are in those chords it's learning you know how to play what notes are in those chords and it's also sort of learning where those chords might have come from and how we can sort of quantify those chords uh, with scales. Maybe, you know, sometimes thinking about scales and chords together. Um, This video is not specifically all about that. It's just talking you through why you might want to spend some time doing that. I've also got three simple tips here as to how you might want to learn those chords. So with all that being said, In my opinion, and I think in the opinion of many great jazz musicians, you as a jazz violinist, even though you're not going to be performing these uh, chords, so to speak, when you are playing a gig, you're not going to be playing the chords behind anybody, you need to learn what they are and you need to learn why they're there. My three simple tips uh, for when you are learning chords, these aren't the only things you're going to do, but these are three simple tips that I think will help you learn chords a little bit better. Number one is learn to sing at least the bass notes. Learn to sing the chords. So you're going to take a simple tune and you're going to learn to sing the chords. Now, to start with, let's, and this is where we're at. We're all at the beginning of our journey here. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn to sing the root notes of those chords, right? So you're going to look through a chord chart. You're going to listen to your favorite version of this tune. And you're going to try and find with your ear where the root notes are. You can use your violin to help you find it and then sing it. And then try and basically do that throughout the whole of the of the tune. Say you're using the tune Lady Be Good, you're going to try and find a G on your violin or whatever, and you're going to then try and sing that over the parts of the tune where it's a G chord. And then you're going to try and find the A for the A minor and the D for the D7. And you're going to try and sing those bass lines or those uh, root notes uh, over those chords. That's my first tip. It's learn to sing at least the root notes over the chords. Tip number two is learn to play the chords on another instrument. Now, if you already play the guitar or the piano, this is a great time for you to bring that out of the cupboard and spend a bit of time learning to play the actual chords or your simplified version, if it has to be a simplified version of the chords. Um, on this instrument. You want to take a chordal instrument, if you already play it, of course, and try to learn to play those chords um, over, you know, and and just learn them. You don't have to play along with a recording. Learning them on their own is is enough. Playing along with recordings from then on is a great thing to do, but first of all, trying to learn them on another instrument. So for me, the reason we're doing this is that it just helps us, helps take us away from our instrument it helps take us a little bit out of our comfort zone and it also helps take us away from the um, habits and the technical things that might hold us back with our regular instrument. You're ta- you're, right now you're playing an instrument that perhaps isn't your first instrument and you're just, you're just going to look at it in a completely different way and it's going to help you learn it better. In my opinion, if you learn things in more than one way, you're going to learn it better. Tip number three is, now this one's a bit of a harder one, but it's definitely worth it. You're going to take the piece of music that you're learning. You've already learned how to sing the bass notes. You've already learned how to play the chords on a guitar or a piano, hopefully. What you're going to do now is you're going to take the chords from that tune and try and work out all the arpeggios that 
those chords are made out of. Chords are just arpeggios. That's what they are. As violinists, we I reckon we've probably learned some arpeggios in our life. And we can probably work out that, hey, the G major arpeggio is the G major chord. Say we're looking at Lady Be Good. A lot of the tune, it's... It's got G major in it. So try and find the notes in the G major arpeggio. And hey, there we go. We know what notes make up the G major chord. Look at the A minor 7. If you're at a very early stage here, guys, you can just say, well, it looks like that's an A minor chord. So I'm just going to take the the notes of the A A minor arpeggio and I'm going to play that. Okay, cool. D7. Now that's this is where it can get a little bit confusing when we see a something seven, and that, so you're just seeing that letter name and then a seven after it. I'll give you a quick clue if this is really new to you. If it's not, you'll know what it is. It's all good. A quick clue here is just play a D major arpeggio at this point. So we're just looking at D major. A D7 has a D major arpeggio in it. A D7 is basically a D major triad with a little extra flat seven on top. So you're going to look through the chords of of the tune you're looking at. I'm just, maybe it's, maybe it's uh, Lady Be Good. doesn't have to be. You're going to look through the chords of this tune and you're going to try and play the arpeggios um, of those chords. So you've done all three of these things, right? You've looked at the chords from a bunch of different ways. You've looked at it with your ear and with your voice. You've looked at it with a different instrument, a chordal instrument that's set up to play chords. You've learned how to play it on that instrument. And now you've started to try and piece together what those chords are on your instrument. Now, for me, this is the stuff that we have to do. And I enjoy this work. I love doing this sort of work. And I've always sort of enjoyed doing this sort of work. Not everybody does enjoy doing this sort of work. But as a violinist, in my opinion, we're going to have to do it. Now, like I've said, just a last parting point here is that so many um, people will take examples of musicians in the past who say, I don't know anything about music theory. I've never learned anything about music theory. I just do it all by ear. And often they'll be talking about a musician who has learned fully by ear. They have learned by um, emulating other musicians. Maybe they've learned by transcribing other musicians. Maybe they've learned by uh, just being taught by somebody else, just giving them loads of lines, and they've just pieced that together themselves. Now, in my opinion, guys, most of the time those people already know the chords right so often the the stories here will be will be based on people who play a chordal instrument so often especially in the jazz manus the gypsy jazz world the django world a lot of the time a lot of the guitarists that we might really love they might say in interviews hey i don't know anything about chords i don't know anything about theory i don't know anything about what's going on but in my opinion As a guitarist, you can sort of get away with that to some degree, a lot more than a violinist can. Because as a guitarist, the first thing you do is you learn to play the chords. Even if you don't know what those chords are made out of, even if you don't know why those chords are there, and even if you don't know anything about sort of chord scale theory or whatever that stuff is, you still have learned to play the chords. And often in that world, you have to play the chords really, really well before you can even start doing gigs, playing any solos. You need to be there playing the chords really, really well. So in my opinion, that is often the case. When we hear stories about people who don't know the chords, people who don't know anything about music theory whatsoever, they usually do know something and they usually have done some work now in the comments of this video please let me know if you disagree and i think that i can probably if you do have any examples of of this not being the case i reckon i can find a reason why it it probably is the case i'm pretty definite about that try and let me know in the comments let me see how it goes the only other thing that i think is a big point as well when we're talking about this is if we don't want to learn the chords we will try to find those exceptions to the rule of the people who don't know the chords but they can still play a great solo okay that is often what happens we we try to find an example of somebody who has done it like the way that we sort of want to do it And my advice to those people who are doing that and they're trying to do that and they're making that, they're doing that in their head to try and make themselves feel better for not doing the work, 
I feel like you're doing just that. You're trying to find a way to not have to do the work. And secondly, you're finding an exception to the rule. Exceptions to the rule are just not the right thing to try and focus on when you're trying to learn something new and trying to learn something hard. Exceptions to the rule really don't help us. Because chances are we need to study the way that most people get to the goal that we are trying to get to. Hopefully that helped you guys. Hopefully that has made some sense to you. Like I said, if you disagree with me, please let me know in the comments. And I think that I'll have an answer to most of your questions if you don't agree with me. Okay, thanks so much for listening, guys. See you again. Goodbye.